And welcome back, AP Calc AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are going to take a look at our second and final video that really ties up the idea of topic 1.4. And it's all about how to use a table of values to determine the limit of a function. And we're going to look at a fairly complicated function. In fact, it's so complicated that our calculator or other computerized graphing utility like Desmos is going to meet its match. And it's going to have no other possible recourse but to tell us a lie and the wrong answer. So let's take a look at what we've got in store for us here now. So in this activity, uh, which you would see in your notes packet as a student at Avon High School, I also have a link in the description asks you to graph the following function. And it's a pretty crazy looking function. There's a lot going on uh, in that particular rational expression. And I'm gonna want you to use Desmos here. You can use either your laptop computer or you could use a mobile app. If you want to pause the video and go ahead and sketch this graph to kind of practice that, making sure that you enter it incorrectly, I would highly encourage it. Otherwise, you can kind of keep watching and see what the syntax looks like. And then we're going to change the window a little bit and answer some of these questions that will ultimately lead us to filling out this table. So let's take a look at Desmos. And here we are. Welcome to the wonderful world of Desmos. You know, despite the fact that I love using TI calculators in my classroom, occasionally there's a place for Desmos to demonstrate something to my students as well. So I really enjoy using it. So if you remember that function, what we're going to do is we're going to go into this first entry line and we're going to type F parenthesis X parenthesis. That's what our function looks like. And we're going to set that equal to. And there's a variety of ways that you can input you know, fraction type of quantities. But if you're just really careful with using some parentheses and maybe some nested parentheses, everything should work out well here. So we have X and if your entry line, if your um, functions and your numeric pad isn't showing up, you just toggle it with this little show keypad shortcut there. So X cubed is found by taking the A to the B power and hitting the three. Notice we're in that cubic uh, uh, exponent there. So we're going to have to click our right arrow either on the keypad uh, interface here or actually on your device. And what I like about Desmos is it graphs on the fly. Hey, there's the graph of y equal x cubed. Thing is, we're not going to be there for long. Add four, then we're going to square it. So we're going to move outside the parentheses by hitting the right arrow and then square. And then we can subtract x all raised to the sixth power. And then what you'll do is make sure you're out of that exponent. We can close off that parenthesis, hit a divide. And once you do that, you're gonna see that fraction appear that we want. And then you can enter the X cubed. And then boom, there you have it. There's the graph of that guy. Now, this graph, you can kind of scroll with your mouse wheel in and out to kind of see what's happening and maybe you can grab on and maybe center things, but this is gonna give you a little bit better indicator of what this graph looks like. Now, if you look back at your notes, the notes ask about potentially looking at seeing where the f of x is behaving as x gets very, very large, right? As x approaches infinity, perhaps. And so if we rely on the graph and say, okay, as X gets really, really, really big, and I can really only get so far as about 21, 22 here, it looks like the Y is becoming, I don't know, eight maybe? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to rely on the table. Maybe, again, you don't have access to a graphing utility, but maybe you have access to a calculator that'll compute values for uh, this particular function, and we could do it that way. So how do we get a table of values? Well, one thing that we could do is edit this list and then choose the convert to table option, and bam, before you know it, in the next entry line, you have a table of values, right? And this table of values here is actually set up 
so that it gives you integer values of x. Okay, well, what if we don't want these integer values of x? What if we want to input our own values? Like, say, the ones that are in the table, like 1, 10. Hopefully, you see those from the document. I'm just reading right from it. 100, 1,000, and I think we basically, let's get 1,000 in there, and I think we just are multiplying by 10, trying to get the idea across that we're getting closer and closer to infinity. So now I'm ready for a million. All right, let's go for 10 million. And then 100 million. Do you like how Desmos kind of puts spaces between three pairs of those zeros? Otherwise, we'd be counting all day. And then finally, with 1 billion in our X column. And there you go. Now let's take a look at those values. We go from 24 to 8.01 to 8.000 to, okay, we're just going to settle in at 8. And then we get a little bit farther away from 8. And then we just get this large number for y when we're at a million. And then at 10 million, that number becomes even larger. And then by golly, once we get to a billion, we get to zero. So what the heck is this limit going to be? Let's put those numbers into our table, not rounding them. Let's keep them written the way that they're written here in Desmos and see if we can make some sense of this. So as I said, we're just going to transfer those numbers from our screen. We had 24 there, 8.016. I'm just going to look off to this other monitor. 8 point, I believe there are four zeros, and then a 1, 6 that registers on Desmos. And then this interestingly gave us 8. Now I wonder if that's 8 point and several zeros, and then maybe it gets to a number. But I'm just going to report exactly what I said I, I saw on Desmos. Here we have 4, 7, 7. At the end, here we have 8 point 0, and then there's a bunch of stuff. 220368. Oh, and then when we got to a million, some crazy things happened. We went to 147 and some change. And then at 10 million, it got even crazier. I think we we're at 154,742.5. And at 10 or at a hundred million, uh, I'm trying to remember what we had. Let me let me just move really quickly back to Desmos and let's see if we can find out. We had, uh, let's see, is this off just a little bit at 100 million? Oh, actually, I never did put in 100 million. Oh, silly me. There is 100 million. Now let's put in 1 billion. And you know what? I don't know if it's going to matter a whole lot because you see that you get zero in both places. So turning back to the document here, we're going to put zeros in both of these because that's what Desmos gave us. Now, if you were inclined to leave this table as X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as X is moving through these values on to infinity, right? onward to infinity, it would be very easy to think that the answer was zero. But if we move back to our graph, which we're going to take a look at here, we see that that doesn't really seem to be the case because it seems like this limit was going to equal eight. And I even made a, a, a mention of how the fact that you could go in and you could adjust your window size. So if you can kind of barely see this wrench here, this wrench is going to bring up some graph settings. I'm going to move my picture out of the way here. And we could change some things up above, like I believe I said change the x-axis and maybe have it go from, I believe I said, 0 to 100,000. Now, I didn't mention what step size we should use. I would say to play it safe, let's maybe use 5,000. And then for the y-axis, I said, let's just go in between 7 and 9. 
and I'll just use a scale of one for right now. And you can see that some really crazy things are happening to this graph. It's like, what? I'm like afraid to even look over there. By the time I get to X being 50,000 and 60,000, et cetera, et cetera. But if I were to move over here, it seems like I have a little bit better indication that this graph is approaching this value of eight. Now remember, seven is down here, nine is up here. The graph seems pretty reliable and, until you get pretty deep into like the 20,000 and beyond. And then it's like, I don't even think we can trust it anymore. And basically the issue is, whenever you're dealing with such large numbers and you're trying to calculate them, and essentially make them larger. Like by the time we take 20,000 and 30,000, 100,000 and raise it to the sixth power, I mean, come on. We're dealing with such huge numbers that even the best calculators on the market or even Desmos is going to struggle a little bit. And so what this is really all about is setting the stage for us to find other more reliable ways that won't rely on technology to answer these questions. And that's what our next several videos are going to be about as we move deeper into the discussion of limits. Be sure to check them out. And as always, until then, keep studying. See you next time.